Examination of the Hand by Mr Magnus Arnanda, Consultant Orthopaedic Surgeon at St George's Hospital. Before you start, remember to wash your hands, introduce yourself and obtain consent from the patient. Ask about any pain and its nature and location. The basic principles of all orthopaedic examination are look, feel, move and then any special tests that may be appropriate. Inspect for asymmetry and obvious deformity, as well as scars. Look for any evidence of muscle bulk loss or wasting, and evaluate for any obvious erythema. Palpate gently for any obvious deformity or tenderness, and for swelling, and for any obvious discrepancy in temperature. Each joint should be assessed for both active and passive movement, as well as evidence of any weakness or pain. If there is pain, identify its location and its nature. Consider whether you want to undertake any special tests. These are joint specific and based on your presumptive diagnosis and resist the temptation to do all of the tests that you might have read about. Position the patient directly opposite you so that you can see both hands. Inspect both the palmar and the dorsal surfaces for obvious nail bed abnormalities, obvious scars or wasting. Turn the palms over and inspect for obvious Jupitrons, contractures, nodules, scars or any clear wasting. It may be appropriate to palpate gently at this stage. When you've done this, turn the hands over and just feel for any obvious temperature differences. Palpation should start at the wrist, working your way from one side to the other through the carpal bones, both on the volar and the dorsal surfaces. Then inspect the anatomical snuff box before moving on to the joints. You need to work your way systematically through each of the metacarpal joints and each of the interphalangeal joints. At this stage it is worth checking the trapeziometacarpal joint for pain and for instability. Assessment of movement starts with simple flexion and extension of the fingers, assessing global function. Ask the patient to flex their elbows fully. This gives you an idea of the range of motion and also gives you an opportunity to inspect for rheumatoid nodules. Ask the patient to place their palms together and elevate the elbows and then place the back of the hands together and drop the elbows to give you an idea of the flexion and extension of the wrist before asking them to pronate and supinate to evaluate the radio ulnar joint. Flexor digitorum superficialis can be assessed by fixing all of the other digits and asking the patient to flex the one you wish to examine. The profundus tendon is assessed by fixing the middle phalanx and asking the patient to flex the tip of the finger. This should be done for each finger in turn unless there is a specific finger that you have been asked to examine. Although neurological examination of the hand is a special test, you should consider performing it on every patient. You need to examine the radial, median and ulnar nerves in both the sensory and motor components. The motor component of the radial nerve is assessed by dorsiflexing the fingers and extending the thumb. The ulnar nerve is assessed by spreading the fingers wide for the interossei. And the median nerve is assessed by abduction of the thumb. Radial nerve sensation is assessed in the anatomical snuff box. Ulnar and median nerve sensation are assessed by touching the pulp side of either the little finger or the index finger as appropriate.
The Tonnell's test is performed by percussing over the median nerve at the wrist or along the path of the ulnar nerve behind the cubital tunnel, attempting to elicit neurological symptoms at the uh, terminal end of the nerve. Phelan's test is performed by forcibly volar flexing the wrists for one minute. If positive, this reproduces carpal tunnel symptoms. Allen's test assesses the relative contribution of the radial and the ulnar arteries to the circulation of the hand. Start by compressing both arteries at the wrist and then asking the patient to squeeze tightly. Then release one side and wait to see if the hand pinks up as the collateral circulation takes over. Then repeat the process, occluding the other artery, to see if this also pinks up. Once you've completed your examination, remember to thank the patient and ask to examine the joint above and below if appropriate. Ask to check the neurovascular status and consider any imaging that you might want to undertake. And finally, remember to wash your hands before leaving.